That almost hurt. 54, okay. That's how I'm gonna throw it, just bad but hard. So the last video I put out was about how fast you have to throw each speed of disc to get them to turn. And I thought that was a pretty cool video. And there were a lot of comments that were asking whether it was the rotation of a disc or the forward motion of a disc that makes it turn. Um, and I hadn't really considered that before. I did a test that was forehand versus backhand before, and it was the backhand spun more and what the difference is in flight there, but that was mainly focused on like fade. And so this might be cool to look at the beginning of a disc's flight and to see what spin has, what effect spin has on that. So uh, I have this disc, this is a Maverick. Um, I was gonna get the nice Dimax on there, but the Dimax guy was busy, so I just drew it on with a Sharpie. Um, but yeah, I'll throw this at a given speed. I have my speed gun again. I'm gonna throw this at that speed and see if it turns, or throw it at a speed to get it to turn with my normal throw, which should have more spin, and then I'm gonna try and throw it with less spin. Um, and that's kind of the problem, is less spin. I'm not really sure how to do that while also getting the nose down and also getting the same speed. So uh, we'll see how that goes. I'm gonna practice with other discs because I only have one of these that I sharpied on. I'm not trying to sharpie on all my discs. All right, I'm trying to get, I think it was 47 for the Maverick. So I'm trying to get like 48, just barely enough to make it turn. And that was not enough. I do have a tailwind though. It's maybe five miles an hour, 46. Okay, so that shouldn't have made it turn anyway. So maybe I have to throw it harder. Maybe I have to throw like 50. How's that? That's 52 but it wasn't a Maverick and I only had one of those. That was kind of dumb. That felt like about perfect. 50, yeah, okay. So I'm using my phone here to try and get the slow motion. It's at 120 frames per second. So if I figure out how many degrees it goes in a frame, I can use that to figure out how many rotations per second. Okay, so this is um, baseline, this is normal throw. I'm just gonna try and go fast enough to make it turn. I don't think I was fast enough. Cause like I threw it on Anheuser, but it didn't turn. That's a, that's a difference is like, turn is high speed stability. So if you throw a disc fast enough that it changes angle, the curving left or right just happens as a result of what angle it's on. So if you throw an overstable disc with Anheuser, it didn't turn, it's just Anheusering and then fading. So I'm looking for that change in angle. And that one I threw maybe on a little bit of Anheuser, maybe flat and it didn't really do anything. So I only have one, so I have to go get it. But uh, I guess just try again. That turned. Oh yeah, I got a nice turn. How fast was it? 53. Yeah, I think that turned. It's just barely. I know my voice cracked. So I just got it to turn using my normal grip, normal spin, normal everything at 52 miles per hour, which kind of tracks because we're in about a five mile an hour tailwind, so it makes sense. I don't think that throwing a disc with less spin is going to be a challenge. I could just throw it worse but uh, the trouble is gonna be getting the nose down and also getting the same speed as before. So I need to hit 52 at least with less spin, but still getting the nose down. So I'm just gonna practice that for now. I kind of felt like it might've turned. 48, not fast enough. See, that's what I thought. Cause a lot of the same things that give you spin give you speed. So it's gonna be hard to not do the spin things, but do the speed things. I'm just gonna throw it bad but hard. That almost hurt. 54, okay. That's how I'm gonna throw it, just bad but hard. So I got tired of walking back and forth, so Anthony's here to help. Um, I kinda wanna get more good throws first. I wanna throw it harder and see if I can like really get a definitive turn. Um, and I think it's gonna probably take like 54 or something, so pretty, Pretty hard for me, I guess, from a standstill. So this is still regular, still trying to get all the spin on it. Oh yeah, that had some turn. How fast was that? 55, ah, uh, a little bit quick. This is gonna be hard and bad with less spin. Okay. That didn't turn as much, did it? How fast was it? 53. Okay, a little bit slower, that kind of tracks. Part of it is I can't tell if it's just more nose up with less spin or if it's actually, you know, if it's the same throw just with less spin. Once again, hard and bad. Oh, 
us right to him. Okay, so basically what I was doing there to try to get less spin is like pulling across with my hand on the front of the disc because as soon as your wrist goes like that, that means that it's not like pivoting and the disc is spinning out of it. So I was trying to do it like that. Um, and it kind of felt like the disc was ripping off of these fingers rather than pivoting out of my hand. Um, I'm gonna try just throwing it with a fan grip, right? So that it doesn't get that pop. And we'll see how that goes. <laughs> that was bad. Yeah, maybe that's why I don't throw fan grips. That was bad, sorry. I don't know, did that turn? Was it hard enough? 52, should have been just barely hard enough, but I don't think it did. I really just didn't film a transition from outside to inside, that's weird. Anyway, let's talk about results. So the test was to see if discs that are spinning faster relative to how fast they're moving forward have more or less stability than discs that spin slower. Uh, so the first thing I had to find out is if I was actually able to throw the discs with less spin. Um, and it turned out that I think I did. So what I did is I had my phone filming at 120 frames per, sec per second, and I would compare one frame to the next where I could see the markings on the disc, and I would rotate the image until the markings matched up. And then I would see how much I had to rotate it and then do some math to figure out the revolutions per second or revolutions per minute. And uh, the footage was a little bit blurry because it's 120 frames per second. It's not gonna be crystal clear like you see on the big fancy cameras, but I think it's close enough. Um, and I also put the footage in the corner of every throw so that if you wanted to uh, look at the footage for yourself, look at it frame by frame, um, you can do your own math and see what you think. Um, I will say though, I was working at 120 frames. On YouTube, it's just gonna be 60 frames. So I guess take that into account for your math. But based on my testing, I was able to throw with about two to 300 RPMs less when I was throwing the wrong way. And from what I could tell, the discs did fly a little bit differently but I don't know how much of that was because of the spin. So what was the difference in the flight? In general, I saw not a lower threshold for turn, like the discs still turned at about the same speed, but the amount of turn was different. The discs that had more spin actually turned more than the discs with less spin. But like I said, I think that was more as a result of nose angle than a result of spin. Because when I was throwing with less spin, I was trying to pull with my hand on the front and that means it's really, really easy to change the nose angle and accidentally throw it two nose up. Whereas when your hand's on the outside, it's a much more uh, of a direct, I guess, line. It's easier to get the nose down. And so uh, I think that that difference in stability was probably because of the nose angle rather than the spinning. But you might disagree with me. You saw the same footage that I did. So based on my research, the more a disc spins, the more gyroscopic stability it's going to have, which is not the same thing as disc stability, but the more gyroscopic stability a disc has, the less it's going to want to change angle. But from my testing, both last time I tested something similar to this and this test, it doesn't really affect the beginning of the flight that much. It just affects the end. So a discs tend to fade a little bit later. So my conclusion, based on my testing, being out there throwing, looking at the footage, I think that the spin rate of a disc has a negligible effect on the stability once you account for the nose angle. Once, if I had been able to throw both discs at the same nose angle, I don't think there would have been a very big difference at all in the stability. But you saw the same footage that I did, and so you can come to your own conclusions. Let me know what you think, if you disagree, or anything else you want me to test in the future down in the comments. Make sure to subscribe for more tips on how to become a better disc golfer from Dynamic Discs. And always remember, slow is smooth and smooth is far.